Listen, man, I use everything as a science project. And you look, you watch, you study, and you learn. Three years ago, we had Georgia Mazdaval on the show four years ago. Nobody knew who the fuck the kid was. You know, he had won a few, lost a few. He did a couple of exciting things. But nobody knew who the fucking kid was. He uh, booked the trip. He booked the show. And South America's manager sent him down there to clear his head. And you heard it from his mouth uh, that he uh, realized he wasn't going to, he was leaving it up to the referees. You know, a couple of months back, we spoke about a situation called frustration. When you just get frustrated with yourself and you break the barriers, you know. George A. Mazdaval knew he had. Now, for starters, I did not bet this. I did not pick a side. You know, I like Nate Diaz as a fighter. I'm a fan of Nate Diaz as a fighter. And I'm a personal friend of George's. So for me to come on the podcast and start yelling and screaming, I just watched it as a fan. It's really weird what's happened to me the last year. Ever since my uh, gambling days, I never really watched sports because I only sports to me meant gambling. But guess what? Over the last couple of years, I'm not going to lie to nobody. I've watched a couple of basketball series at the end. I'm big at the end. I'm big in the playoffs, you know, the Final Four, uh, you know, the Baseball World Series. I watched all seven games, which is very rare for me. Uh, it's good just to become a fan again. And with MMA and it, like everything else, I was looking at it as my past. And, this time I just wanted to watch. In fact, I watched the fight at home with my wife. My wife is a, uh, uh, you know, Mazdaval came over the house. She loves Nate. Da, 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 you know, we watched it. And, you know, for you people who are in a part in your life, whether it's school or your business or whatever, listen, you always have the tools available to you. It's just putting them all together. You know, listen, uh, how many times I... I open up my Twitter and I see somebody put a Spider-Man picture up of me facing Doc Ock or me running in the longest yard. Well, guess what? That was 2003 and 2004. That was 15 fucking years ago. So if you think I just popped up in 2010 because Rogan said I was funny or something like that, you're, you're mistakenly wrong. This journey started in 91. I had the pieces to become a good comic maybe in 98. I just didn't listen and went off my own beaten path but uh i caught myself and i stuck to the plan and even if it took 18 15 years i caught myself and i did something with it with mazda Val, it took i mean how many fights did he had 40s he's had 40 fights already 20 in some fucking black dude's backyard <laughs> that they're selling fucking booze on the fucking lot and shit like that i mean so uh you get frustrated you get sick and tired of where you are in life, and you do something about it. He's he's the fighter of the fucking year. They said it last night. Uh, it's amazing when you see this, because all of us have these these gifts. We all have this, and we'll sit back and go, "Oh, I wish I did that." We all have the tools. It's putting them together, all in one shot. The stars aligning. And you really, really, really taking a deep look at yourself and being honest and going, listen, you know, I'm doing this. This is good, but I'm, I'm missing the point in three different fields here. I'm missing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to put more emphasis on this and more emphasis on this and forget about this and write this off. This just doesn't work at all in my life. It takes a big man to do that. Uh, it takes a man to do that. There's somebody to look in within and go, this is not fucking working. You don't need anybody to tell you. Sometimes somebody will come to you as a friend and try to tell you, hey, this thing ain't working. And you'll get mad at him or whatever for your insecurities. But you know when something's not working. Nobody has to tell you. You know when something's not right inside of you. So uh, I want to congratulate George. I want to congratulate Nate for a great fucking fight. I mean, a lot of people are disappointed. Hey, we weren't there. We don't know what that cut. Like I told Rogan on the phone this morning, I don't know what that doctor saw. I know years ago when I was a kid, a friend of mine got caught uh, with a barbed wire. He was playing baseball or some shit. And he got caught with a barbed wire or something. And it cut the nerve in his face that moved his cheek. So for years, even after he got plastic surgery, he looked good. He still had dead movement in his cheek. 
and look at the age of 20 like he had gotten a stroke. So we don't know. We weren't there. I want to congratulate George, congratulate the UFC on being fucking creative uh, and finally, you know, making a car. I mean, it was just a great idea all around, and everybody enjoyed themselves. It wasn't the ending we expected. But, again, you've never seen a bookie with a part-time job. Nate Diaz was uh, the underdog. And if you saw people, like I told my wife, look, listen to the garden. They're all yelling Diaz, Diaz, Diaz. Everybody named Mother Bet Diaz. So it's just the way life works out. I hope they do it back and they run it back. But listen, man, whatever point in your life you're on, you may be a little frustrated. Get that notebook out. I've said it once. I'll tell you 20 fucking times. This shit doesn't happen overnight. I, I wish it did. I wish that you just did something a few times and you got good at it. It takes time. And even when you should get there, you got to figure out what the fuck you're going to do with it. That's what people never really understand. <clears throat> Everybody wants to get to that place. But then they get to that place and they really don't know what to do. And I'm guilty of this too. We None of us know what to do. We get kicked in the stomach 15 times and you figure it out. Maz Deval figured it out. And uh, this is a lesson for this is not about gambling or this is not about who's tougher, who hit harder, or, you know, who's making a comeback. This is nothing. I'm trying to read between the lines here and show you guys that I wish that you read between the lines on this fight. Even his preparation for Diaz, everything. Whether Diaz got hurt or he couldn't run the last four weeks, Mazdaval was precision. His kicks were precision. Uh, and it's something that you look at and you, whatever you do in your life, you're like, when is my life? You know, one of the pieces going to fall together. Well, I'm sorry to tell you something. The pieces never fall together. When was the last time you bought a puzzle that was built? You ever bought a puzzle that was built? No. Mm -hmm. So why do you think the pieces are going to fall together? You have to put the pieces together. And I guarantee you that once you put the pieces together of your life, it's a different feeling. Look at my, he's a different man. He's a different man when you look at him. Look at the old him. What happened? Did he do drugs? Did he do steroids? Did he? No. He looked within himself. And he found the answer to all his fucking dilemmas. And he applied himself. And that's what we talk about here on the church. It doesn't happen overnight, man. The stars have to be aligned. Yes, I agree with you there. You got me on that argument. But you have to be prepared for the stars to be aligned. And you have to look at that fight like that. That That's a big lesson for all of us that have been frustrated. That There you go. He was frustrated. He was a 50-50 fighter. He didn't know what was going to happen when he got into a fight. All he knew was that he was tough, and he knew how to handle himself. But that's not enough sometimes. That's not enough. This is where your mind comes in. And you tap into your mind, and your mind will set the game plan for you. You know, Lee has always said you're very calculating. Every move has to be calculated. Or if not, you're going to get, if you watch Derek Lewis's fight, the first kick he threw, he didn't have to throw it. And what happened? He almost got his fucking leg twisted. Don't throw half wit. That lesson is don't throw 50%. If you're not going to go 100%, don't throw it. Don't throw it. That There you go, another lesson. Derek Lewis, when he threw his foot up, like a big piece of steakum, and the guy grabbed it and tried to voke off whatever his fucking name, Dracula's cousin, tried to fucking twist his ankle and all that shit. That, that, that's what happens when you go into something half-cocked. So you learned two things watching that fight last night. So I hope that you fucking enjoyed it, and I hope that uh, it all worked out for you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, this is on the sa similar note. What do you think? I, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know how you feel about him, but what did you think about Kevin Lee? Switching to a great head coach and I don't, I don't know. That's not what no, no, no. But I'm talking about like I'm talking making about the making a change, making a change. Like, yeah, like I Jorge. Know. Okay. I don't know. I didn't even think about fucking Kevin Lee. I wasn't even thinking about Kevin Lee to be honest here. That poor kid. He fought. He's still in Jupiter. That poor <laughs> kid. There's nothing to talk about. Okay. Yeah. There's no lesson there to learn. He sweats. Big fucking deal. He he lost his last three fights. It's time he did something. You know, I give him kudos for switching, but you know. Okay. He's. That poor fucking kid. Yeah, he went out. They had to carry him out. His fucking head was a little man bun. What a fucking shame to wear a man bun and get knocked out. Unbelievable. What a fucking night for that poor kid. That poor bastard.